I'm Balu, and music has been a driving force in my life. I'm on a mission to explore dance music's most iconic cities, and I'm going back to where it all started, New York City. New York and dance music have a unique symbiotic relationship that has seen every era of this culture. I've lived here before, and I'm back to discover how it's evolved since I moved away. Maybe there'll be a renaissance again. Because I come from the renaissance in the 1980s in New York, where it was you came out to dance, it was about dancing and it was about coming together in the dance floor. No matter your gender, no matter your color, it's about coming together. I've seen many clubs close, many open. And you know, it, it's like a cycle of life and death in a way. Feeling the bass and like the heart beating and then the bass and the music and just like feeling connected to the music but then also to the people. I mean, we just went through a pandemic where we were all home alone Absolutely. and I feel like the music is really just connecting us all so together good to be back again. in the community. In New York, you can get a little jaded. You can go out anytime you want. When you get that taken away for a year, you really realize how grateful you are to have this. Like, I I, I already knew, but I told myself a whole year, like, ne never forget again how important this is to us and our life, because it really is. Like all legends, New York's dance history has had some highs and some lows. In the early 2000s, the scene had to face laws limiting numbers in dance clubs, enforced as part of Mayor Giuliani's obsession with cleaning up the city. His cabaret act drove the scene even further underground and forced the city's promoters and dancers to do whatever they could to keep the scene alive. This scene is now re-emerging from all that chaos. I'm always nostalgic when I come to New York. Any corner that I'd walked by before, where a club used to be, or you know, where a record shop used to be, I would just spend six, seven hours a day in that store. And I used to, you know, just walk out of there with piles and piles of records. It was the 1980s, and house music was born. Following the decline of disco, pioneering young DJs took center stage as they experimented with drum machines and synths in music for the first time. They owned the night, and the city loved them for it. The soul of this defining era has never left the city. House music was easily amplified in New York City. It was pushed to its limits. I came 20 years ago to hear music. This time, I'm here to, to understand what it does with the city. New York drove the music scene forward as remixes and producers brought together disco, rhythm and blues, funk, rap, punk, new wave and dub into a mixture of sound seemingly beyond categorization. The 80s were quite simply some of the most inventive and exciting years in New York City's musical history. Very first party was uh, called the construction party. What they did was they threw sawdust on the floor to soak up the oil, right, from the garage. Because it was actually a literal garage. The paradise garage. You know? <laughs> so that was one of the best parties I ever went to because, you know, we were dancing all over the place, man, stored us on the floor. It was just fabulous, man. And that was the beginning of the garage. I'm honored to meet you, Mr. Benny Soto. Oh, come on. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk to you about the New York scene over the years. Can you tell me about that? Well, I think for me, it really, really started uh, at the Paradise Garage. Mm -hmm. When I crossed into, you know, uh, into that world, it was like Alice in Wonderland. And there was one, one DJ, Larry LeVan. He would play, you know, anything from like Yoko Ono mm -hmm. to some classic disco thing, soul, the beginnings of house. And it was all like 
sort of like eye-opening. It's always a reference point in my soul because it was that good. Yeah, I feel like it's a, it's a city that continuously pulls maybe from that heritage, but also kind of reinvents itself. You know, New York City is, is sort of rooted in that. You yeah. know, that's where our foundation is. Yeah. You know, in, in these old school parties that have been running forever. Over the years, I've seen it get really small, and then I, all of a sudden, I've seen it get huge. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of ebbs and it flows, and now it's a whole new generation. Yeah. It's like new kids who want to know about the scene, they want to know how this started, they, they're inspired to learn about it, so they come, and we love it. It's sort of a reinventing yeah. of itself for a new generation with new sounds, new mm -hmm. DJs. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely relevant. It's happening like I can't even keep up with it. And people often write off this new generation. Oh, well, it's not that special. But that's not true. There's a lot of art. There's a lot of fashion. You just have to look. Art is stolen, in a sense, you know, so what we are seeing today is the foundation that the people before us put down, you know, to be here now, and then we transmute it in a newer way. That's the beautiful thing about New York is, uh, you know, you have multiple generations coming into one one space. So I wasn't there when a certain song dropped in the disco era, but I'm in a club at the same time when people who were there and have that relationship to that song and the way they explode like on the dance floor and with that energy, that transfers into the next generations because there is a lot of uh, crossover, you know? It's like not very like, only old people go here and only young people go here. It's unique to a few cities around the world. New, yeah. York, New York is definitely one of them. How has New York um, inspired your music? New York is like a gold mine for music. So much amazing music was born here. So much amazing music was, you know, discovered and thrived here. You know, from the disco era to, you know, the house era to hip hop, everything. There's just like a melting pot of cultures and music and um, energy. There's this timelessness to, mm -hmm. you know, music here. Good music is, is timeless. It can be appreciated across generations and I feel like it's like a gift from the heavens. It's like there's something deep and spiritual mm -hmm. about a certain song coming to you at a certain time in your life, you know? You look like New York. <laughs> you embody it, you Thank know what you. I mean? You know, it kind of, the kind of set I'm going to play a lot of times dictates what outfit I'm going to wear, you know? If I'm going to do the James Brown set, I might wear the hot pants, you know? Like, <laughs> I don't know, you know, it's just, I, I like to have fun with that because it's, it's the full scope, you know? Yeah. It's not just music, it's not just art, it's, it's, you're creating a world. I think music inspires and dictates so much of other art. If you think about the 80s, there was like Warhol and Basquiat, they had a certain soundtrack, and I mean, they were even part of, like Basquiat was even part of that soundtrack, yeah. like creating his own vibe and music. Recently, how do you see, how have you seen the New York scene evolving? There's so much optimism, I believe, and like so much, uh, I think, you know, especially the kids, like were so cooped up for like the last couple of years, you know, I think there's just been an explosion of energy. The new young generation of DJs in New York are like really following in the footsteps, elevating it, but also, you know, throwing it back, like, you know, taking those gems from past generations, putting it in, fusing it into their set, and fusing it to new sounds. And it's really exciting I to see. I see it, actually, them. I heard it. I yeah. heard it, actually, over the past couple of days. Great. You know, I hear a lot of that, you know, New York rumble mm -hmm. still, still there in the music. Yeah. In New York, there's always, like, innovations. You get inspired anywhere you go. We definitely try our best to portray our feelings and what we live in New York through our music. It's a timeless scene though, right? It's all transitioning. Move yeah. forward, think forward, look forward, things yeah. end, things begin. You have to know how to just direct yourself the right way. And the way we're trying to do it, it's like, you know, the purest way as possible. Every corner of the street, you meet people with like talent, you wouldn't believe, you know? Yeah. And I yeah. feel like it's something that's only like, here in this city, you know? There's like certain energy here that brews a lot of really great and talented minds. And 
you know, that's really inspiring for an artist. That energy and self-expression defined the city's dance scene. New York catapulted everything from roller disco to break dancing. I came to New York City to dance. You're dancing on the streets, you're dancing in the clubs, you're dancing everywhere, in the parks. It's not just a studio space where you come to dance. You share that art form everywhere. It's almost like a language. Keep dancing. <laughs> dancing is a really good way to express oneself. Your conduct in life will always shine brighter in your dance movements. James Cricket Coulter is well known around the world as a pro dancer and teacher. His class at NYU covers music history since the early 1970s. Jimmy is also a dance promoter encouraging dance crews back into nightclubs to try and recreate the energy of the early years of house. Jimmy's crew, the Crazy Natives, have been at the forefront of the city scene since the blueprints for music and dance were laid down in the early 90s. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. DJs and dancers have this symbolic relationship, man. Everybody's culture has this, somebody's at the fire making music and people get up and, you know, you know, it starts there. The DJ starts to do his thing and the dancers kind of respond. We're a part of that cycle, and it went from jazz to rock and roll. Then once we get to DJs, and then we get to disco, we're like the babies of that. We're part of that lineage, all the way to house dancing and house music. And then what about the, the transition into the, the class that you, uh, you teach? The NYU stuff is kind of like all around uh, street dance, mm -hmm. but my, my forte, like what I love, my passion is like, I love house music, I love house dancing. I do a freestyle class, I'm aiming it at house dancing. Because I think uh, there's so many formal dance classes, and as you know, man, it was more clubs going on in yep. the 90s, but now it's like the dance classes outnumber the clubs. Now it's like, I, how do I help the dancers reach that creativity? I'm trying to get them to, just little things, little cues, because some dancers are amazing once you get them out the mirror. Once you connect them, with themselves, out of the mirror, magic. Due to their close ties to the scene, dancers were also affected by the restrictive laws that hit local nightlife. They just overturned it recently, but it, be, it, was, it affected the size of the clubs. And it, at one point it was, if a bar had a little bit of space and we went to dance, somebody would come out from behind the bar and like, yo, they can Stop shut us dancing. down. Stop dancing. And this was in the 90s? Yeah, this was in the 90s, man. How did it shift? How did it change over the so, years? So, less clubs, smaller venues, dance spaces became sparse. So now we're trying to, you know, couple whatever space we can to dance. I think everybody being cooped up during COVID, mm -hmm. now that now, you know everybody can come outside and party again, I think everybody's just roaring to connect with each other again. So I'm loving the vibe and energy yeah. that's going on right now. Does it remind you of older, yes. older New York City? 100% yes. The fashion from the early 90s is coming like the baggy clothes, the Adidas striped pants. Like I'm looking at kids like that could be my kids dressing like I did in like 91 and 92. Yeah, I, I see love it. it. I love it. <laughs> I hear it too. I hear it in the music. Yes. Yeah. Yep. There's like a 90s revival happening. Everyone looked different. The dances were different. The vibes were different. It wasn't like one, you know, template. You know what I mean? It was just whatever you feel. It's you hear like him saying this, pure right? Pure self expression and it's like personal. That What you just said, and because you were there back in the day, he, that's what. I always tell him that's what I'm always pushing for. You see how he's getting excited seeing it? That's how I feel. That's why I'm always pushing everybody to like, oh, do you, do you, because I don't want everybody to look the same. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. That was a lot of fun. Jimmy's dancing is a celebration of the old and the new. This only reflects the ever-changing, timeless nature of the city's relationship with dance culture. Nightlife is all about the spontaneity. It's all about going with the flow, where the night takes you. Oh my gosh, there's so much energy in just following it and just seeing. Yes, 
seeing what the city has to offer that night and just exploring it. It's all about just connecting with people and then having your own individual experience with other people. So it's like a collective, immersive, but individual experience. We've had our ups and downs, you know, we've had our periods where the city has really kind of turned on us. Yeah. You know, attacked us. But I think we're sort of like coming over a hill right now with all of that, where, you know, we're, we're really kind of seeing that they are realizing how vital we are mm. to, to the energy and to the economy of the city. Sometimes I've thought about this in my own life, like, you know, you're getting older, like, what did you really do? And I always think to myself, well, you know what? I created a lot of opportunities for people to dance mm. and have a good time. It's like, I did that a lot. Yeah. Like I gave back somehow. Thank you very much for, uh, Thank you. for talking to us. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you. We were all outsiders looking for belonging. Everyone needs to belong. And we found our belonging through fashion, dance, and music. And it's still happening today. And that's a universal and I still find my sense of belonging there. Um, grown up, married, kids, and I'm here still. The funk never stops. <laughs> the <laughs> funk never stops. It just keeps changing, man. It gets short, that tall, slender, sexy. You know, funk never stops. Man. We always talk about, you know, New York's heritage and uh and dance music, and I don't think that heritage ever stops. I think it goes on and on and on. The DJs dig through decades of, of content, and the city just creates all of this all the time. Stepping away from this construct of time, right? It's not about time, it's about music, and music can come from any era and still sound good, and I think New York portrays that in a really nice way. New York's always been my best music memories. This trip, uh, you know, it sent me back. Uh, it sent me back to the same joy and nostalgia I used to feel when I um, when I heard music here. You know, 20 years ago. I hear that passion again. It's back in a in a really big way. Yeah.